In my previous video, I explained to you how to create a route. And when that route is visited in the browser, it automatically uses a controller. And that controller then controls what happens to that specific request. So for example, we make a get request and it then goes to the user controller. It uses the method, which is show users in the user controller. So if we just go into our controllers and user controller, it uses the show users method. It then grabs a user from the database um, using eloquent, and then it sends it through to our view. What we're going to do now is we are going to create a form so we can add a user into the database. So the first thing we need to do to be able to create a form is we obviously want to have a view for that form. So if we go back to our routes and web, let's create a new get request. We're going to do route get users create, which means that when someone goes into users forward slash create, it's going to show a view with a form in it. Okay, so then what we have to do is we have to refer to the user controller and then we have to create a method in the user controller, which we haven't created yet, but we're going to call it create user. If you go into the user controller now, let's go and create a new function, public function user, uh, sorry, create user. Now, if we just do DD test and go into our front end and hit refresh, you should see test comes up. Okay, so now what we wanna do is we want that to return a view. So let's go and create a view. If we go into our resources and views, let's go and create one called uh, createuser.blade.php. And we will also just copy all of the stuff that we had in the home.blade.php into createuser.blade.php. We'll then remove the variables we created earlier. And if we then go into our user controller, we can do return view create user. Okay, and let's just type in our create user blade. We'll just say this is a test, hit save, refresh, and you should see that now our view for creating a user has been set up. Now that we have a working view, let's go back into Sublime Text and let's create our, our form. So let's just open the form tags. And what information do we need to store in the database? If we go and have a look at our database, we should be able to see the fields that we need to populate. So we need to create F name, L name, email, password, notes. Okay, so let's create a, an input field for first name. So input type equals text and name equals F name. And then we'll do the same thing for L name. We'll do the same thing for email. We'll do the same thing for password, but we'll actually just change it to password. And then we will do a text area for notes. Okay, so this isn't gonna come out looking very good because I am not using any styling at all. We also wanna do a submit button. And we'll call that create user. So if we go into our front end and look at it, you should see it looks like this. We're just gonna pretty this up a tiny bit. Uh, we will be doing some styling later down the track with Bootstrap, but I'm just going to do some spaces here so it's very simplistic for you. We'll also do some placeholders so we can see what it is. So first name, last name, email, password, and notes. Also, we just make the email an HTML5 email field instead. And then if we hit refresh, we should see our form here. Great. So now that we have the ability for someone to type into the form, now we need to make the form actually do a post request into Laravel and create the user in the database. To make a post request, the first thing we need to do is we need to tell the form that it is a method of post, and then we need to give it an action. That action will be the route which the form will be posting to. However, we haven't set up a route yet. We need to set up a post route. So if we go into our routes web file, let's create a post route. You'll notice that it will look exactly the same as a get route, but it will be called post. 
And then we can use whatever address we want to, but to keep things consistent, we're going to use the same name as the get request. It doesn't matter if they have the same name as long as they're different types of requests. So we're going to do a post request to this route and it is going to then be controlled by the user controller and we're going to create a method called save user. We'll then go into our user controller and create a method called save user. We then need to accept the request. Now, uh, Laravel automatically uses the request dependency injection, um, which comes with Laravel. So we need to do a type hint, which says request, and then put it into a variable called request. So now when a, uh, it's po this method is posted to, it knows that this variable is actually the request from the form. Okay, so now that the uh, method has been set up, all we have to do is get the uh, form to post to this route. But we can actually give the route a name to make it easier. So let's do name and we'll do create user. So that's the name of the route. And if we go into our form, we can then open up the blade tags and do route create user. That way, if you use this specific route in a lot of different pages, you can just update it once and it will reflect to all of the locations that use this specific route. Okay, so now that we have done that, I'm just gonna go into our user controller and just do test. Okay, let's go into our front end and hit refresh and let's just type some information in here and hit create user. You'll notice though, it says page expired. Now, this is a protection feature of Laravel. It uh, stops CSRF, so uh, cross-site request forgery. Um, and basically, when someone comes onto your website, they are assigned a session and they get, get given a token. And the token needs to come with the form request. And this just stops people from spamming your website or trying to do something malicious on your web application. So to include the token inside your form, all you have to do is go into your view and do, do at CSRF. And if we go back into our form and hit refresh, if we look at the actual source, you'll notice now there's an, a hidden input with a value in there that gets posted. Laravel will check for that and if it matches, then it will allow the request to come through. Okay, so let's try it again now. and we'll hit create user. You'll see now that the request has come through and test is working. Great, so let's go back to our user controller and let's grab the request. Let's do re die and dump request all and that's going to give us all the, all the data that we've submitted through the form. Let's do it again and as you can see, now we've got the data that has been posted from the form. So now we just have to manipulate that and add it into our database using Eloquent. To do that, let's go back into our user controller and let's create a new user. So the first thing we want to do is we just do user equals new user. We also have to make sure that we are using the user model. And as you can see, we are at the top of the class here. So this is going to call Eloquent to create a new user. And then we want to do user fname equals request fname. Then we'll do user L name equals request L name. User email equals request email. User password equals request password. And obviously these names are referring to the names that we've attached to the form inputs. And then you can do user notes equals request notes. Then all you have to do is user save. It's as simple as that. So let's try that and see what happens. Let's go back to our view and hit, let's just type a password in there, hit create user. You'll notice nothing happens, but if we go into our database and hit refresh, you should see the information we typed has just been added as a new user. So ideally what you want to do is you want to return the user back to the form to tell them that the user has been created. So what you can do in the controller is return redirect back. 
and Laravel will automatically redirect the user back to the page they came from. So let's try that again. I'll just do some gibberish in there, create user. You'll see now it has just come back. The form is no longer filled out because the data has been submitted. So let's hit refresh. As you can see, I'm in there now. So obviously you don't want to just show it like that. You want maybe a success message coming up, telling people that the user has actually been created. So to do that, what you can do is you can do back with, now let's create a message type. Let's just say success and then type a message. So user has been added successfully. So what this does is it sends the user back with a session, which is called success and it has a message called user has been added successfully. So if we try and add another user, it still doesn't come up with that message. And that's because we need to use Blade to, sh to, to loop through the session and grab the message that we've just sent back with it. Let's go back into our create user.blade and let's go on top of the form here and do this blade statement. If session has success, as you can see in the user controller, we called it success. Then we'll just close the if statement. So if the session has success, then we want to show a message. So we can do session get success. Let's try it out now. So let's go back and refresh and just type some information in here. Great, user has been added successfully. To keep things clean, it would definitely be worth going into your blade, uh, into your create user.blade.php and to grab this uh, if statement here and put it into its own file. So let's go into our includes folder and create a new file called um, we'll just call it validation.blade.php and we will put that statement into there. We'll then include includes.validation. So it refers to this folder within the views folder and then validation. So now if we go into uh, the form and we try and fill it out again, the message comes up. The reason why we do it that way is so that we can reuse that. When we create other forms, you can reuse that functionality. So in our next video, what we're going to do is we're going to learn about server-side validation. So for example, if someone fills out this form and they don't fill out a specific part of that form, then we don't want Laravel to process it. We want it to spit back a message and say, sorry, you haven't filled out your last name or you haven't filled out your email. We'll do that in the next video.